The pledge to keep the Indo-Pacific free from coercion. The commitment by the Quad comes in the face of growing Chinese influence. Grant Newsham from the Japan Forum for Strategic Studies tells us what the Quad can do to counter coercive efforts, especially those coming from China and Russia. Well, it's got to uh, certainly keep building these alliances which have been uh, started, and the Quad is a, a good example of it. But it's really in the early stages when you think about it. Uh, the Quad still has a lot to do in concrete terms. Uh, to demonstrate what it's capable of. Uh, but it does at least have the four main democracies in the region working together. That's part of it. Uh, additionally, America has to get uh, its uh, Japanese allies to do a lot more than they, they have traditionally done. The Australians are always willing, but they uh, have some capability and resource limitations. And the Indians uh, as well, uh, there's more that they can do. Uh, additionally, it, this isn't just a military arrangement, but rather it needs to be seen as an economic, political, and diplomatic uh, sort of form semi-alliance. It's not a formal alliance at all, but it needs to have those components just as much as a military one. But also the Americans do have to treat their friends and allies in the region uh, with some particular attention. And America hasn't done that uh, as well as it needs to, particularly uh, in the Pacific Islands. And once again, uh, Australia, India, and Japan have a big role to play there as well. So it really needs to beef up cooperation and capability, but it's once again, not just militarily, but economically and politically as well, and to be alert to other countries that want to join in with them.